Sergio Perez has the impossible task of saving his job at the Red Bull team in the next two races or he's out. This much is clear with everything that has come out lately in the news. That raises the question of who will take the seat he's leaving behind. Many articles have been published about that too. So let's go through it all and towards the end of the video I'll put forward my favourite option and why. It may surprise you. I'm Wimbo. Here's 3 seconds to leave a like. Sergio Perez The 34 year old Mexican driver received a 1 plus 1 deal recently, to everyone's surprise. In all the seasons he drove for the Milton Keynes outfit, he had problems with keeping up with Verstappen, but this season it was a lot worse than other seasons. He scored 15 points in 6 races, causing Red Bull to lose the battle for the Constructors title possibly. For comparison, Max Verstappen scored 119 points in that same period. We have come to a point where Red Bull has said it's unsustainable for Checo to keep performing the way he is now. Now what we've seen with Perez over the years at Red Bull, I'm surprised they didn't see this coming. Or maybe they did, but there were other factors to consider when they offered him this contract. I'll explain later what I think those factors were. We have reached a stage now where a special performance clause might come into play to replace Sergio Perez and maybe as soon as the summer break. I've read that Red Bull has the right to terminate Perez's contract if he falls more than 100 points behind Verstappen at the halfway point of the championship or the end of the season. He is 137 points removed from his teammate and has just two races to get himself within that 100 point range if he's not to get replaced by one of the many other drivers jumping at the opportunity to drive for Red Bull. Christian Horner was pretty vague about it as usual. He knows it's unsustainable to not be scoring points. We have to be scoring points in that car and he knows that. He knows his role and his target. So nobody's more eager than Checo to find his form again. I personally think that Perez will be let go at the summer break. He brought a load of money in with the sponsor deals and the merch he sells in his home country. So Red Bull can't just chuck him out, like they normally do with underperforming drivers. I wouldn't be surprised if some of those deals required him to have a long contract and with this contract he signed, the requirements were met and now they can replace him because of what was written in the papers. It sounds like a smart plan and something I wouldn't put past Horner in doing. But that leaves the question, who will fill that gap? A few names are floating about. Liam Lawson The young New Zealander had five great races last season when he replaced Ricciardo, who broke his hand in Zandvoort. It was actually a surprise to see him appointed as a reserve driver rather than a full-time driver. The stories about him have been changing too. From saying he will have a seat in 2025, to it not being certain at all, to him possibly looking elsewhere, to him getting a test day in Silverstone as this script is being written. Now the changing story might also have something to do with what I described in the Perez bit. They couldn't give Tsunoda a seat, promise Lawson a seat and keep Ricciardo and Verstappen as well. Liam Lawson will be driving the RB20 during a filming day. This filming day is the second TCC promotional event of the year. Every team is given two days per year in which they can drive its current car around the track to gather promotional material, such as photography and video. The rules allow 200 kilometers of track time using the car in a known configuration with no new parts permitted and using specially supplied Pirelli Academy tires. Last year Ricciardo did one of those tests and was promoted to the then Alfa Tauri seat and Nick de Vries was out. Horner says not to read too much in tests like that but I wasn't around to see his nose growing. So what's the meaning of this then? Will Lawson be promoted to the Red Bull team straight away? No, I don't think so. I think he's going to replace Daniel Ricciardo in the VCarb team. Daniel Ricciardo Ricciardo has been showing more pace lately and gets asked about these things all the time. The reporters smell something's going on and want to know more, just like everyone else. He was questioned about recent events and said the following. I mean look, I know my year, sure I've had a few little highs, but as a whole it hasn't been what was probably expected and what I want for myself. So I know when you're not kicking arse, of course, you're going to receive a little bit of criticism. But sometimes it's probably blown apart you know. I don't think the gap has ever been, or rarely has it been, you know, half a second or something to Yuki. 
I think also he's been getting a lot of praise, so I'm not getting my arse kicked by someone that's not very fast. I think everyone acknowledges he's got very good one lap pace, but yeah, the teammate battle is obviously one that's closely watched. Despite him losing to his Japanese teammate, I have a feeling Ricciardo will get Checo's seat. So Honey Badger fans, don't worry, Danny Rick isn't going to be demoted to reserve driver again. But I can hear you think, his performance this year is up and down, Yuki's better. I think there are reasons why Yuki isn't in the conversation, but Ricciardo is. The reasons. The biggest reason, in my opinion, is Max Verstappen. With the power struggle going on and the threat of him leaving the team being real, Red Bull will do everything to please him. Verstappen has said in interviews that he likes working with Perez and he wants to maintain that sort of relationship with the driver in the other seat. He is very open with his data and advice and overall it's a good relationship he has with his teammate. He explained that all the great drivers had those kinds of situations with the second driver and that it works quite well that way. Yuki Tsunoda is a great guy, but also a loose cannon sometimes. That wouldn't work with Verstappen in one team, as he's an even looser cannon sometimes. The Verstappen haters will use this as a way to say Verstappen is afraid of having a great teammate. However, you only have to look down the grid to see how many points Norris has lost to Piastri, Leclerc to Sainz, and at Mercedes it's not even clear who the number one and the number two drivers are. Max is there for himself, and if he has the opportunity to stay out of a toxic situation like Rosberg versus Hamilton, then of course he's going to organize it that way. It makes sense. He's not afraid to have a fight, he just doesn't want to lose a championship because of it. The other reason is the driving style required to keep up with Verstappen in a car that is made so fast and hard to drive, only he seems to be able to handle it. Sergio Perez has driven a lot of Mercedes powers cars in his years before Red Bull and his preference is to have a way more balanced car. The Red Bull packages were the opposite, especially after the first run of upgrades. That explains his yearly slump. Daniel Ricciardo also has Verstappen's kind of style and was pretty much at the same level as Verstappen in the years before he left the Renault. So a teammate who gets along with Verstappen and can handle the nature of the RB20 would be welcome. Together they can score podiums and keep the other teams at bay. The way things are going now, McLaren will grab the Constructors title, if not them, it'll be Mercedes who have found pace too. I'm sure Checo can find another seat if he wants to, as he brings that money with him. So Danny Rick and Supermax back at Red Bull is something I can get really excited about. Those two are hilarious and I love seeing them goof around. We all thought it was great to see Hamilton win again, but what if Daniel Ricciardo wins another race? That would be amazing! You know what also would be amazing? If you hit that subscribe button. Take care now. Doei doei.